Hello and welcome to this Innovation Coffee Break. Today we will cover the integration of real-world positioning into our closed-loop hardware-in-the-loop validation. My name is Mehmet Kuzolo, Product Manager for Infotainment and Connectivity. So, when we talk about real-world positioning, we are actually addressing the inclusion of GNSS signal generation into our HIL simulation. GNSS is the acronym for Global Navigation Satellite System. It is the generic term for various satellite systems providing signals that transmit time and position information to any device that contains a GNSS receiver chip, such as smartphones, navigation systems, or electronic and telematic control units. The receiver uses the satellite data to continuously determine its current location. There are several global satellite systems in operation. Certainly, one of the better known is GPS, provided by the United States. Besides GPS, there are also the Russian LOLAS, Chinese Baidu, and the European Galileo system. Each of them has their own satellites orbiting the Earth with an altitude between 19,000 and 24,000 kilometers. The simulation of GNSS signals elevates the toolchain to an even higher grade of realism and enhances the range and depth of ADAS AD testing scenarios. By transmission of these synthetic signals in real world format, GNSS receivers are enabled to detect any possible position from all over the world regardless of where it is currently located. In other words, the device on a test receives the satellite signals as if it were at the simulated location at the simulated time. The significance of high-precision GNSS simulation is inclining through rising SAE levels of automation. At lower levels, such as level 1 or level 2, where driver involvement is more in the foreground, GNSS data is mainly used for navigation systems or other convenience functions. However, at these levels, GNSS stimulation within HIL is less about high precision and more about optimizing systems already capable of operating with varying GNSS data quality. At level 3 and above, the vehicle takes on more and more responsibility, which requires high precision signals. Here, GNSS stimulation evolves to an even more helpful enhancement for testing of autonomous functions, such as evaluating how autonomous system copes with transition from high to low signal coverage, ensuring consistent operation without driver intervention. For customers and stakeholders, the integration of GNSS simulation into HIL testing frameworks offers a spectrum of benefits. One of them is the extension of testing capabilities, which leads to a higher confidence in safety and reliability. Now, let's dive into a more practical view by handing over to my colleague Kai. Thank you, Mehmet. Hello from my side. My name is Kai Franzbecker and I'm an application engineer with a focus on autonomous driving applications. So this is our autonomous driving HIL demonstrator. And now I would like to show you how we expand it by including GNSS signal simulation. To briefly introduce the setup, we have two parts here. On the one hand, our simulation rack, and on the other side, an NVIDIA Drive AGX, a prototyping ACU, acting as the device under test, short DUT. All the simulation data provided by the hill is fed into the DUT so that it will behave like if real sensors were attached. You may already know the demonstrator from previous sessions. Therefore, in this video, I only want to give a brief overview of the system. If you would like to get more details, just check the video to which we have provided a link below. The heart of the system is our DSpace Galaxio. Running in hard real-time, it simulates the automotive simulation models ASM, such as vehicle dynamics and the traffic simulation. We also have a SensorSim PC with high-end graphics cards running Aurelion's sensor simulation with a real-world scenario. The first GPU is dedicated to the camera simulation, including camera lenses and sensor models. Additional sensor models can be applied via our Environment Sensor Interface, ESI unit, and are converted to GMSL2. On the second GPU, we have a LiDAR simulation, including material properties. This data is fed into the ECU via automotive element. Additionally, we could also add radar and ultrasonic simulation, but since we don't want to focus on those, we now want to take a closer look at the GNSS simulation part. For the GNSS simulation, we have decided to integrate third-party GNSS simulators into our setup. In this regard, we cooperate with two of the leading companies in this field, Safran and Spirant. Of course, there are more providers on the market, but with these two, we have a lot of experience and several successful projects. 
We offer complete and fully integrated solutions for both Seferin's GSG 7 and 8 series and Spiron's GSS 7000 series GNSS simulators. So for both devices, we provide a suitable interface to our Hill real-time simulation. And we have made sure that you can get everything you need as an integrated solution from DSpace. These GNSS simulators are completely flexible. So together, we will find a configuration that suits your automotive or aerospace applications. No matter whether we are talking about GPS, GLONASS, Beidou or Galileo, all common civil signals are available. Even multi-antenna setups to increase position and heading accuracy can be easily simulated. You want to go even further and increase the position accuracy to centimeter level? No problem, real-time kinematic approaches such as feeding our RTCM correction messages into the receiver are well prepared. Now let us really take a look at the simulation itself. Here you can see Control Desk, our simulation monitoring tool with which you can for example start and so stop the simulation or change parameters. For this demonstration I have included the GNSS simulation based on Saffron and here we can see a layout prepared for this use case. The dashboard shows the parameters that are relevant for the GNSS simulation. Coordinates, altitude, the velocity and its derivatives, each in northeast down directions called NED in the Earth's coordinate system. GNSS specific parameters such as the transmission power of the output satellite signals are also accessible during runtime. This is very useful when simulating a tunnel scenario, for example. All right. I'm just about to start the simulation. We have prepared a German highway scenario near our DSpace headquarters. The GNSS simulation is getting started synchronized and now we want to take a closer look at it. The GNSS scenario has been loaded by our Scalexio and we can already see that there are several simulated GPS, GLONASS and Galileo satellites in view, which means they are above an elevation mask of 10 degree elevation level. For example, we can see GPS satellites with a space vehicle ID 7930 or Galileo satellites with the SV IDs 2, 7, 8 and so on. From our simulated position, the Galileo satellite 7 is at the azimuth level 101 degree and elevation 65 degree, which is almost directly above our simulated car. So for those satellites that we just saw, we are already outputting their RF signals. For demonstration purposes, I now read the detected position from the GNSS receiver into which we fed the RF signals back to the GNSS simulator. And now we can see the deviation between the simulated position and the detected position. On this map, we can see both. The receiver has already determined its position and the deviation seems to be in a range which is perfectly fine for this application. As I said before, we could increase the accuracy to centimeter level with approaches like RTK. Well, these signals received by the development kit here could ju now just be received by your ECU and the development tip. Take a test drive wherever you want without actually being there. Just get in touch if you would like to learn more about this topic. We will be happy to help you configure a setup of your needs. Be sure you will receive a scalable and fully integrated solution. Have a nice day and thanks for watching. DSpace, your partner in simulation and validation.